What's good, Math Family? In this video, we're looking at three examples of parallel lines cut by transversals, and I need you guys to stick to the end of this video because our last example is going to be parallel lines cut by more than one transversal. Starting this video out, we're talking about the angle theorem. So we're talking about corresponding angles, vertical angles, alternate interior exterior angles, all of those. So as I look at this first example, I know this angle here and this angle here are corresponding angles. So they're going to be the same. So I could fill this in as 3x minus 10. Now, when I pay attention to this angle pair, right, these two angles, they form a straight line. So I know they're supplementary, meaning they equal 180 degrees. So if I want to solve for x, I could create an equation as 3x minus 10 plus 106 is equal to 180. Simplify like terms. 3x plus 96 is equal to 180. After I subtract 96 on both sides, let's see, what do we get? I get 84. And then to figure out what x is, I divide by 3, and I get x is equal to 28, if I'm not mistaken, which it is. So just remember, this is x. This does not actually represent the angle measurement. For the angle measurement, we just now need to go back in and plug in and simplify. So once I multiply, right, I'm going to have 3 times 28 minus 10. We know 3 times 28 gives us 84. 84 minus 10 gives me 74 as an answer, which is 74 degrees. So if this angle is 106 and it's corresponding to this angle, this angle is also 106. And now I know 3x minus 10 is equal to 74 degrees. And when I add these back, 106 and 74, right, it's going to give me 180. So I know that this is correct. Now, in our second example, a little bit different. So off rip, we could use consecutive interior angles, right, that theorem, because we know what? Two consecutive interior angles are going to be supplementary, meaning 182. So I don't have to fill in the missing parts. But if we did, just understand that 66 degrees in this angle here are corresponding angles, right? And then now, since we know corresponding angles, these are also vertical angles. So this is also 66 degrees, just like 2x plus 5 in this angle are also vertical angles. So when we add these two up, they should be what? Supplementary. Just give you a little bit more background on it. So when we set our equation up, we have 2x plus 5 plus 66 is equal to 180. We simplify. 2x plus 71 is equal to 180. Simplify one more time by subtracting 71. We know 2x is now equal to what? 109. And now once we divide by 2 to get x by itself, we know x is equal to, let's see, 109 divided by 2. All right, 54.5. All right, so that's what x is equal to. Now for us to figure out the angle measure, let's go ahead and go in black and let's plug this in. So now we have 2 times 54.5 plus 5. So now what we get as a result is 109 plus 5, which is going to give us 114 degrees as a final answer. And just remember, whatever the angle measure is, once we add it to 66, it's going to give us 180. So that is another way you could kind of use your X or use the other angle to figure out what it is. And with that, we're going to the last example of this video. Last problem of this video, and if you found this video helpful, we're going to ask that you smash the like button for us. So they want us to prove that angle 1 and angle 13 are congruent. They're the same. So we're talking about this angle here. We're talking about this angle here. And all they've given us is that line A and B are parallel, just like line C and D are parallel. So how can we prove that these two angles are the same? Well, let's look at it like this, right? So I will come in here and I'll say that, hey, angle 
one is congruent to angle nine, right? So now I'm saying these two are, 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 are the same. How are they the same? Corresponding angles are congruent. Then from there, what I would now do is I would focus on angle nine and angle 13. What would I say about angle nine and what would I say about angle 13? I would say that, oops, I forgot my one here, guys. I'm sorry. I would say that angle nine is congruent to angle 13 for the same thing. They are corresponding angles, right? So we know these two are the same. So now how would I tie the connection between angle one and angle 13? And this is how we'll do it. I would use, I would say angle one is congruent to angle 13 because of what? The transitive property. And then that'll be done. So what exactly is a transitive property before we wrap this video up? If A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then that means A is equal to C. What does this mean in this problem? If A, angle one, is equal to angle nine, which is B, and angle nine, which is B, is equal to angle 13, which is C, then that means angle one and angle 13 must be the same. And even though we have more than one transversal family, those angle theorems still apply. And I want to make sure that you guys know that. And this is how you solve a problem where we have parallel lines cut by two transversals and we're proving that the angles are congruent. Really hope that this video view was helpful for you, math family. If it was, comment down below, smash the like button, and don't forget to share our channel and tell your friends and family to subscribe if they're looking for math content or just help with any math. Thank you guys so much for joining Algebra One with Mr. Peters.